today we will be using the CMW blending system. If you're interested in getting this system, there is a link to it in the description below. And we will be working with this system together for the next year. We will make it through all the colors. It's a very intensive study of every color in the Prisma color box. So if you stay along with me by the end of the year, you guys could be teaching this class. This also will include Holbein, Polychromos, Duent, Karen Diash, and several others that the books are in development right now. Polychromos books are already available, and the link is below. So let's get started. Hi guys, welcome back. Okay, we're on our second color today. And before I start with the actual colors, uh, I was asked by, I can't, countless people by now. I mean, I could do pop-ups of all the different messages I got. What paper do I recommend that you print this on? And I spent my weekend on Friday and, and today, well, Saturday, going around to all the different places that I knew that sold paper, only to go back to Walmart and where Fern Curtis had recommended. And she had recommended the Walmart brand paper. She does it on a 60 cardstock. They didn't have the 60, so I bought the 110. And the 110 is great. It's Georgia Pacific premium cardstock paper. It's 150 sheets. It was only $5.48. It's definitely made a difference. A big difference and while it was okay on the computer paper it's wow on this paper by the bright white and it is definitely bright white okay so let's talk about the color cream and I have a lot of interesting things to show you and discovered and let's get started okay this is the polychromos the pressure blending pages and we have our comps. Okay, now if we take a look at the cream, and I'll try to zoom in on it. Okay, so here we have the first one, cream. I lo looked on the uh, polychromos, and you can see that cream really sits in between their ivory and their cream. Their cream being much more yellow than Prismacolor's cream. So don't go by their names. Ivory is lighter than the Prismacolor cream. So you have like a triangle here and with that one sitting right in the middle, which is pretty good because I think cream is a little bit light for a lot of the things that I do. And you're going to find out now why and, and what. So let me... Get you back out, and we'll take a look at this. As I started using the cream and really paying attention to this color, I have sort of an opinion on it. And it's not as creamy as some of the other pencils that Prismacolor puts out. If you're sensitive to touch, and I am, there's a definite difference. I don't feel this color blends as well as some of the other colors. Like when you start getting into the yellows, they start getting creamier feeling. And when the white is very creamy. So if you actually pick up those pencils and you just close your eyes and just scratch on the paper, you'll feel the difference. It's definitely scratchier than the others. And that made a big difference when it came to the blending. They're a it's a little bit harder color to blend than say the white. So would I use this as an all general blender like I do my white? Probably not. And I only say this because sometimes I'm looking for a little bit more yellow and the ivory or the cream just isn't it. And I'll, I'll demonstrate what I'm talking about in just a minute. So as I made it through this list, ivory basically blends with most of the colors without turning it horrible. Okay, we're not making mud with a lot, but it did make mud with some. And we'll get to those colors that you can mark off on your sheets as you don't even bother. It does mix well with ginger root. 
Artichoke was nice too. I've used this color combination a lot. I don't think I would use cream and eggshell together. I like the eggshell color better. Um, when it goes down on the paper, at least you could see the color a little bit more. With the cream, if you're not going for white, cream is just a little bit too light for my, it's not a yellow, it's not, you know, it's not a white, it's just, it's not even like ivory, off-white. It's just a dull yellow color to me. So it's not something that I would just pick up to use all the time. But there is a time that I do use it, and we'll get to that. Getting into the yellows, it, it just doesn't spark much in me. The only time that I do mix yellow in with cream is when I'm doing candlelight. And the when you're doing a flame, right when the flame comes off of the candle in anything that you're drawing, it's not yellow. It doesn't go from the black to yellow. It sort of goes to that in-between color. And I did find that that in-between color is not the color cream. That Prismacolor doesn't really have that right color. And it probably, you will find that in the polychromos. So if you're doing candle and you want that color that's right next to the wick, that white, you're going to go for the cream from polychromos or even the ivory. It's just a little bit better color choice, in my opinion, of course. That's what I would pick up. So really, it's nondescript going through the yellows. Um, as you start getting into the oranges, it's okay. You could blend them, you know, uh, vanilla cream, whatever. Going across, it did mix nicely with the pinks. Um, it did create a nice color with the reds. So it's okay if you have it. Where it did shine is when you're doing skin tones. Skin tone, it it's for basically very light skinned that you can lighten up the light peach. And when you're doing that first layer for your skin tones and you have very light skin, if it's a yellowish undertone that you're going for with really light skin, that's when I would I would pick up the cream and start with the cream. Normally I go for a little bit pinker and I will or a peachier when I'm doing skin tones and I start off with the light peach. But if you want to do really light, you can pick up the cream and do it with that. It does make a pretty good undertone for skin. It mixed nice, nicely with the purples. Now, when you're going to get in trouble with the purples, and you have to think about this, is how much of a purist you are. Because technically, yellow and purple make brown. So as I started getting like into like the grayed lavender, I wasn't thrilled with the mixing of the gray lavender and the cream. It's just a personal thing. I did notice a little bit of mud. And we're going to get into three color blends in a bit, and you'll see what I'm talking about when it came to the three color tones. It wasn't that bad with the two colors mixed together. Whatever color, darker color really dominated over cream, and I didn't get much of a color change in it to even be concerned. But I did when I got to the three tones, and you'll see what I'm talking about in a second. So here we had the purples. It was not moving, like the cream was not creaming into the purples that much. And that, as I said, it was very hard to get the colors moving using this color. So really, I mean, you can't go really wrong putting it next to each other in a color palette. What I liked is this. This was one of my favorite ones, and that's that indigo blue. It did make a slight green because it's a yellow tone. It did get slightly green. So if you're doing anything in jewel tones, peacock, it that was a very good color blend. So this is a definite yes on it. And then there was another one. Okay, the aquamarine. I did like the way it was reacting with the cobalt turquoise and the aquamarine. They were really very pretty even into the light green I would say this whole grouping here is a definite yes I would use that as a color blend now as I got into the greens 
it was okay. It didn't do anything to the green to really change its color much. When we do eggshell, which is coming up in, a, in like two more videos, one, two, three more videos, the eggshell does a much better job with green as far as bringing out richness. Okay, putty beige, that's, I don't think I would ever pick up like or care about a cream and putty beige. And going into these, these are getting towards your, your darker skin tones and your umbers. Mm, there's better colors to mix. As I said, it's not bad. It's just not something I would do. Gray, yuck. Okay, there was nothing that I liked about the gray mixed with the cream in any of the shades. I don't think there would be a reason that I, at least I would pick up and blend cream with gray. Yellow does not alter gray at all. You Or gray does not alter yellow at all. It it just makes mud. And when you use gray and yellow, you can only shade over it. So you just put that skim on it. And if you're going to put that skim on it without creating mud, go for your polychromos. Much better. Now, when you're using your polychromos, they're, remember they're similar but different. And the colors that are here are what I've been finding as I'm actually studying what the effects on each color is when you add a certain, you know, when you add cream and you look at it, they basically react the same way as the Prisma colors. So if the indigo blue looks good, the indigo blue over here would look also. But remember that with your polychromes, they don't react, they don't blend. They sit in layers on top of each other. So that's, you have to think of yourself, well, is that cellophane really going to look that good as a mix? And I guess that would be the same. I would, I would choose the same color and say yes or no. Your comps are close enough to be able to tell the reds and the reds over here would react the same and probably a little bit worse with this because they don't blend at all. So with the polychromes, I always kind of look at palettes instead of blends. So if you like the cream with the palette, it's okay with every color. I hope I just made sense. So now we're going to talk about three color and I'm going to give you some of my favorites here. I really like this, these blends a lot, all except for one right here. So I gave you 10 that I like. And then I'm going to always give you one that I'm going to show you how it doesn't work. Oh, and just to mention that neon colors in your metallics do not blend with cream. You ruin the neon or the metallic mixing them with any pencil. So always use that as a palette color, not really a blending color to change the actual color. It's so much nicer. If you're using a neon, you want it to be neon. Okay, so let's talk about these blends and how it works. On this blend, this is Artichoke, Cream, and Goldenrod, and it did a very nice, I, I would do this in a, in a desert scene, in any sort of khaki that you would need something, ground cover, very nice, leaves, it's good, cottages, it would be that type of color with a cottage, I would add in a little bit more um, brown into it, but this is a definite winner in my book. Here, it's... An interesting color combination, remember it's over here, I used sunburst yellow, cream, and peacock green. And that was definitely a winner. I would, I would find some sort of foliage to do in this trio. And the cream is blended into the whole thing. I did it sort of as a palette with the two colors and then creamed them all together with the cream pencil. Now here's where what I wanted to show you where it did make a difference. Now, normally, these colors are magenta and aquamarine. Magenta and aquamarine, when blended together, gives you the diazinine purple hue. I normally would color these two. When I got the cream in there, remember, the cream has yellow. Blue and yellow make green, which mix with the red. And whenever you mix green and red, you get what? Mud. So while it's not awful in a tiny space, if you're doing anything large, it did become, the actual blend itself became very muddy. There was no descript color in there. It just turned it yucky. 
So uh, just warning, that's how this color works. Remember, this color you would react as a green. I love this combination. And that was light green, cream, and cobalt turquoise. Uh, this is going to be in my next picture. That's what I love about all of this, these three boxes, the pods, that forever you will have, if you're using these pods, forever you will have these mixes. Now, I didn't write in my colors yet, but I'm going to. They're on my other sheet that I'm reading off the side. I just wanted to be able to uh, write them in really nice. Over here, I have non-photo blue, indigo, and cream. Remember, it turned it a little bit yellow, so it turned it a little bit greenish on the greener side that if you use the two blues together, and I like the way that gave it that look. So that's a definite yes in my book. If you are doing any sort of green fruit, we got our color match here. Cream, lime peel, and apple green. This is going to be my next leaf combination, and I, it really worked. Okay, we have denim blue, cream, and parrot green. I brought out that green, played it up, and I love the color that this turned. That light, it really brought it out. So this was another winner. I did this color, pale vermilion, cream, and crimson lake. These are your fire colors. You got your red, your yellow, and your orange. Except it was so dull, the cream color is so dull, in making your, your choices, probably the yellow would be a more yellow color when doing the fire colors. So, but it was still a pretty, a pretty mix. I just wanted to show you guys what the fire colors look like with that. But remember, when you're doing candle on the polychromos, you could see here, this is not really flame color. Where on the polychromos, the colors are there for that flame. This I thought was pretty. It would look very nice on a flower. And this is mulberry, hot pink, and cream. And I like the way this, this is the blended out color. And I really like the way that looks. It's a very pretty natural pink. I chose this because this would make a, a nice ground cover for anything, any areas that are up front. And then you can mix it with um, this in the back. And I just changed this color combination up and made it a lighter variety of this. And this is the ginger root cream and sand so it's just the next one's over from this one which I'll, was artichoke cream and goldenrod so if you use this combination and this combination as ground cover you're going to get a nice combination of shades going in on your ground and that's important to make it look natural and i also love this this is a Purpler combination reminded me of this, so I wanted to redo it in the purple. This is lavender, cream, and dahlia purple. And the three of them, if you put some flowers in that look like this and some flowers using this, and even if you go, I guess, the flower using that's nice garden variety, you can do your whole thing. Here you have your garden colors. There's a garden color. So right here, you've got a beautiful mix for any sort of flower arrangements. So that's that. Okay, we made it through two colors. I will be doing a demo this week using these colors. And I will see you tomorrow. Take care. Bye-bye.